Hello guys, welcome back to some more Magic Arena gameplay. This time we're going to be playing the Sapperling Spawn deck. This is the black-green aristocrat deck, which kind of focuses around things dying and doing stuff. It's mostly going to be around sapperlings and fungus creatures. But as you can see here, we have uh, the Poison Tip Archer, which is kind of like a blood artist. For this deck, it's incredibly powerful. We are running three of it, along with what I'm hoping is to add uh, another... Tender Shoot Dryad, which is kind of crazy. Five mana creature, and if you have the City's Blessing, you're just going to get a Sapperling each upkeep, yours and your opponent's included, and Sapperlings get plus two, plus two, if you have the City's Blessing. So it's just insane. I mean, so much power there, and especially with the Poison Tip Archers, if you have multiple of them out there, it's very difficult for your opponent's they're not going to really be able to beat you in combat. Makes it very difficult for them. And Slimefoot the Stowaway is also a pretty good card here if I can find it. Uh, it's always it's kind of tricky. I don't like the layout here. Wish they made this a little bit easier to figure out. Every time I click on the colors in the on the top there, kind of just goes to a different one. Don't know why. Yeah, but Slimefoot the Stowaway is really cool. It can produce those Sapperling creatures. In combination with Poison Tip Archer, this can be a pretty deadly deck. Not super standard competitive, but on Magic Arena right now, the decks aren't too competitive, so something like Merfolk can dominate. Whereas in standard, it's not really super competitive. So we're just going to start a quick game here. There is also some news here with uh, the new... Ravnica set. I forget what the second set's going to be called, but we know a lot of the promo cards. I don't know promo cards. They're called masterpieces. I think those are the masterpiece cards. Those are pretty cool looking. They're nice and shiny. I think they mailed them out as compensation for people who couldn't get those Mythic Edition boxes for Guilds of Ravnica, which I think is a pretty cool thing to do. But, you know, I'm kind of jealous at the same time because there's some really cool ones like Demonic Tutor. And I definitely want something like that, or the availability of that, in the next Ravnica set, even if it is just a masterpiece. Love doing this here with this deck. Turn 1, Fungal Infection, uh, Land of War Elves. Really awesome. Minus 1, minus 1, we end up getting a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really been talking too much about Magic the Gathering news because there hasn't really been too much interesting going on. And I've kind of been making a few videos a week, trying to stay consistent on that. And I'm sorry, I mean, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to make any kind of gameplay video last week. It's a little bit busy. I was preoccupied with other things in my life. And it looks like we're going up against a dinosaur deck here at 4-2. This is not a very difficult deck to beat, so it shouldn't be too difficult of a matchup for us. For 2 we have plenty of removal in our hands. We have this Twilight Prophet, but I don't want that to be removed early on. That could be good late game consistency. Basically like a Dark Confidant. And we might just wait here. I don't want to get Poison Tip Archer out there too soon either. We do have removal. We do have ways of dealing with this dinosaur here. Hopefully if we can get the Poison Tip Archer out there, it can stay out there and we can really punish our opponents. But yeah, we're just going to use the normal casting. We're not going to sacrifice our Sapperling unnecessarily. And we're just going to beat them in the face with this 1-1. One, one. And it's probably good we get this out there now. Reach and Death Touch are also pretty good stats, even if it is just a 2-3-4-4. So far, Magic Arena has been pretty good. I've been enjoying it so far. Haven't been playing it too much the past two weeks. You know, like I said, haven't been, uh, didn't upload any gameplay last week, so it was a little bit difficult for me. And also, uh, a little game called Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, so <laughs> not as interested in Magic Arena as of late because any free time I've had for video games has been occupied with Red Dead. Absolutely love that game. I could spend all video talking about it, but this is a Magic the Gathering video. Check me out on Twitter if you actually do want to talk about personal things like that. 
or just anything outside of Magic the Gathering, I think that would be a good place to do it. Or Patreon, too, if you happen to be a patron. And it looks like we have a pretty good setup here. We're just going to get some more creatures out here, which is brilliant with Poison Tip Archer. The more creatures we have, the more we can just threaten to attack with. We're just going to attack with our Flyer here first. Keep the pressure on them. Yeah, they get a decent card draw with an underrated card that is Colossal Majesty. Three mana, green enchantment, they just get an extra card draw for something that's really easy to trigger in green. Creatures power four greater, that's kind of the whole deal. And this is a dinosaur deck too, so you're going to see a lot of big creatures. Pretty good card. I would recommend it for green EDH decks too, if you're looking to build on a budget. Yeah, it's not Sylvan Library, you, you don't really get the top deck fixing like that. But it's still decent card draw. You're still getting... And they're going to remove my Poison Tip Archer. Well, better now than later. I mean, it's still good card draw. I mean, you're getting an extra card in green, which... I know green has a lot of, like, 5 mana cards that you get to draw a ton of. A lot of those card draw spells are pretty expensive, though. And they're usually just one-time sorceries. The good thing about Sylvan Library is that it's consistency in card draw. You know, you don't always get that in green. So I didn't... In my past videos, I know I've always been dishing on green in terms of not being that great in card draw. What I mean is, it's not good in consistent card draw. It can be good in massive card draw spells like that. And there are some good creatures that have, like, cast triggers... But a lot of those are, again, kind of expensive, like 6 mana, Soul of the Harvest. Right now is probably a good time to just swing all out. Our Twilight Prophet's putting in a lot of work, in the air at least, not so much in terms of the trigger. But it is good for consistency, even if you aren't able to hit them for a lot of life loss. I don't really think they can do too much. I mean, they might be able to swing at me back. I don't know why they would do that. I got plenty of things to do in my hand. Okay, you got uh, 9 power there swinging at me. Okay, probably... The smartest thing to do is to give the... The dinosaur... Minus 1, minus 1. And then block it with the token. Block the uh, the boar with the token. That way I'm only taking four. Because it's too risky to go all the way down to 11. And, uh, okay, to get a Lanowar. I'm just going to play another costly plunder. Very good card, too. Also very underrated in black EDH. Just because of the abundance of artifacts and creatures. I know some people thought Alter's Reap was basically the same thing. It's not. Costly Plunder is objectively better. Get some more Sapperling production. That's always good. And I think I might just play Torgar here, even though it's pretty much going to do nothing. Um, it actually puts them at 10 life, but I get a decent blocker, which to me is a little bit more important. I don't think we're at the point where we could just threaten in numbers yet. And they're probably going to be like, you know, what's going on. Oh, wait, it didn't set it to 10. Hmm. I don't know exactly how that happened. Alright, what are they going to do now? I got plenty of pressure here. Once I get the Poison Tip Archer out, I can just swing all out. And I don't think there's too much they can do. And yeah, I do apologize. These games aren't going to be super competitive. Because that's just what Magic Arena is right now. If you're in Bronze Tier, which I think I'm Bronze Tier 3. I don't play too much of this game, guys. So, you know, don't fault me for being too low on the totem pole. But yeah, you see a lot of these pre-constructed decks that they give you. This is actually a pre-constructed deck that I made a couple tweaks to just recently. 
so other than the the dryads that I added, the tender shoot tender shoot dryads, I think that's what it's called, and the extra slime foot, I really didn't do anything else to this deck. Pretty much the same precon. And we just get a ton of good stuff in our hand, but I don't really think it matters, because once we play this, we just swing all out. And they have to block, and they probably have to kill one of our creatures. And we have a 2-flyer, two 2-2, two, two, or a 2-4 flyer in the air. And we got him with the GG's. But yeah, I mean, isn't really too interesting for me compared to Red Dead Redemption. Which I've just, I mean, I've been playing that game forever now. In my free time, whatever free time I get to play video games or think about videos. A lot of that's been going to that game and I am, I'm not ashamed because it's such a brilliant game. Looks absolutely beautiful. Now we're just going to go on to game two, and I think I might just end the video after this game. Because I think we're going to end up around, if not close to the 20 minute mark, which is where I'm aiming for. But yeah, waiting times aren't too bad at all. I mean, that's just, you know, six seconds. I haven't really had any technical issues yet. That's always nice when you're trying to upload some gameplay. Or when you're trying to record it, anyway. And our opening hand is with my favorite card, Fungal Infection. Hopefully we face another Llanowar Elves, because that's going to make the card brilliant on turn one. Because we don't really have any other early early turn stuff. We have a Poison Tip Archer and a Tender Shoot Dryad, so two of our best cards in our opening hand. Good enough reason to keep it, even though the hand isn't super amazing. There's green, and there's the land of our elves. Well, you know what we have to do. We're just going to kill it, get a token. Uh, we're just going to play a forest. And, oh, I misclicked. Yeah, I probably should have attacked. Yeah, hopefully that one damage doesn't come back to bite me, but seeing as our hand is pretty good, I don't think it will. And I don't know if we're going to be going up against Mono Green Stompy or any kind of variation where you just play like three or four Galtas and absolutely just tear your opponent apart. So yeah, getting uh, getting the Thalid out there. 3-2, dies, gets you a 1-1 Sapperling. Pretty decent sized creature. Yep, can deal with that boar all day. And yep, why not just get the Poison Tip Archer out. I'm more concerned about them removing my Tender Shoot Dryad later in the game. Because that's actually one of the cards that once you get it out there, it's very difficult to deal with. Because then you just have a ton of Sapperlings that are 3-3s. Three Pretty much a win con in the deck, even more so than the Poison Tip Archer. And they're going to get rid of it. Okay. So at least I drew that out. I got plenty of uh, token support in my hand anyway, so... Shouldn't be too difficult. I don't really care about creatures if they don't have trample. But yeah, I mean, you probably aren't going to see this boar. This is a limited value creature. You're not going to see this in standard at all. So it just goes to show the actual value of these pre-constructed decks on Magic Arena and their overall competitive nature. Or their lack thereof a competitive nature. And it's a good thing that we have this card here that's going to give us three 1-1 one -one Sapperlings. They're going to block all day. I have no reason not to attack with this Thalid again. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. They have two cards in their hand, which it's always important to focus on the total number of cards in your opponent's hand. Because that's all, I mean, that's all they have to threaten you with is answers. And if they only have two cards in their hand, how many answers could they possibly have? I mean, they're in green, so I'm guessing something like an overgrowth effect. Pump them up by, you know, plus three, plus three. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to make one of these mana dorks here, a 0-2, and then double block it with two tokens. So hopefully we get to kill off one of their creatures. And we're just going to chump block the 4-3 boar. It's probably the best play. And I don't know, they probably have an answer. So I might just be able to bait out another answer here. Which even if they do get to surprise me here and kill off some of my tokens, I still have my Tender Shoot Dryad in my hand. May not be able to get it active with the City's Blessing. Okay, there it is, plus four, plus four. Kill off two of my tokens, it's kind of annoying, but oh well. At least I don't take too much damage, I'm still in the game. Uh, probably just play the Yavimaya Sapper, just to get another token, get some blockers, and I have something to sacrifice to the offering, so I can minus five, minus five something. Okay, I don't, I'm not too afraid of that. Yeah, I mean, vanilla creatures, this deck isn't really too good. All right. So I might be able to fool around with them here. Hopefully I can kill off most of their creatures. I think I'll just be able to kill the boar. I don't think I'm going to be able to do too much other than just trade a safe block with one of the 1-3s. And we're just going to sacrifice a sapperling. I hate the timer. The timer's so annoying in this game. Wait, what? Oh, please tell me. Yeah, I had another misplay. Yeah, I sacrificed the wrong sapperling. My bad. You are not watching me at my finest right now, unfortunately. But we are able to get this Dryad out there. If we really want to. I think I'm just going to hold back now. Doing the math, we don't have the City's Blessing if we play it. And there's no point in playing it if we don't have the City's Blessing. I don't know what they're doing. If they have removal, I don't think they're going to be able to do anything too serious. Main downside of playing mono green right now is that there isn't the best removal. So we get another 3-2 that when it dies we get some more tokens. That's always valuable. And I'm just going to attack. There's really no reason not to with a 3-2 that dies and replaces itself. That way I can get the city's blessing next turn and then start my token army. Okay, they're going to double block. Doesn't really matter. I was going to kill off one of their creatures anyway. Not too certain what they're doing right now. This is always the tricky part when you're playing against a deck that seems so simple. You have to ask yourself, what's taking them so long? Because they are playing mono green, which is very simple. They're playing vanilla creatures. I don't really know how complex their deck could be beyond just pump effects. So either you're going to use them or you're not. And we have the City's Blessing and pretty much, I would say, a win here. Unless they can deal with it next turn. We also have another Fungal Infection in our hand, so we could also get some more tokens that way. Alright, well, we get a 3-3 Sapperling. 
Get another one. Very good card, Tender Shoot Dryad. Very easy to deal with. It's just a 2-2, but you want to play it at the right time. Get it out late game. It's very difficult to deal with them. Because you just create this wall, and you can just attack for days. Really no reason not to at this point. Because their upkeep, we just keep making blockers. Our upkeep, we make even more. And that's pretty much game here. Poison Tip Archer. More of an incentive to swing out. Probably going to hold Packer Dryad for obvious reasons. Not too certain how Fungal Infection is going to work. I don't think it really matters which one I Fungal Infection. I just want to get another Sapperling. Keep getting this token army built up. More creatures are going to die. That's three triggers. You're down to two. I don't think there's any way you can win at this point. You'd have to deal with both of them now. And just in pure numbers, I have you beat. Oh, wow. So we just win two straight games. want to thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for showing support for my channel. Hope you enjoyed this gameplay. As always, you guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video.